This is Settlers of Catan set up for a four player game. You need uh, piles of the resource to one side as well as the development cards just there. You need a hexagonal modular board set up as follows. You've got C around the outside with ports every other square. And on the uh, centre of the island you've got different uh, resources or different terrains in hexes um, with different numbered tokens on them. This is set up for four player games. You've got blue, red, white and orange and, and there's some helpful cheat sheets. I'm going to show you how to play. Okay, Settlers of Catan is a resource management game. Um, you're, it's going to be the first person to ten points as the winner. I'll tell you what scores points in a sec. Um, and this is how you set it up. But before you start, you're going to place two of your settlements on the board. Two of these uh, small settlements on the board. You're going to take it in turns. For example, Blue's going to place one settlement on one road. He can place it on any of the intersections between the hexes. I say intersections, I mean the corners of the hexes. So say Blue places there, he may then place one road adjacent to his um, settlement anywhere he'd like. Then Red will place one. The only two places Red can't place is one away from Blue, and that will last for the rest of the game. So Red can't place here, here or here, but he can place anywhere else, even on the edge of the board if he wants to. So, so, let, so let's say Red places here and white places here and then it's oranges go. Now orange is going to get to place two of his settlements now and then it's going to go back to white, red and blue. So orange might place one here with his road going that way and orange might place another one here with his road going that way. And then white will place his second settlement red will place his settle set second settlement and notice you can place on the edge of the island and blue may place his second and last settlement there, or he is going to go in the middle there. And that's how you set up Settlers of Catan. What's going to happen after you set up is the following. You're going to start with some resources, and the resources that you start with are the resources that are adjacent to your current settlements. So if we just look at blue, for example, blue's going to start with one grain, one sheep, one wood from these three places. He's also going to start with another wood, a third wood, and an ore. So he would then take these from here, as was red, red would take his resources and white would take his, and orange would take theirs as well. Um, you'd start the game with that many resources, so I'm just going to look at blue for the moment. He's going to get uh, one sheep, one grain, three wood in total, and an ore, and he's going to keep them. And the resources you have are secret to yourself, but you can tell people what you have, you don't have to show them however. So Blue's going to put them there, and he's going to keep them, and each player would get their own resources too. A turn in Settlers of Catan consists of four phases. Um, the first phase is going to be the roll of dice phase, the second phase is collecting resources, the third phase is the trading phase, and the fourth phase is you may build anything or sometimes play some development cards. Um, so let's say it's Blue's go, he's got his two dice here, um, he's going to roll them, and he's got, let's say it's not a seven because that's a bit awkward, but a six. Okay, what you would then do is you would look on the board for any hex with a 6 on it. There are going to be 2 of most numbers, apart from 2 and 12 where there's only one of them, and 7's a special case. So you would look on the board for 6's. Well, there's a 6, and there's a 6. What would happen now is that any settlement surrounding this particular hex would get the resource of that type of hex. Okay, so in this, this case, this 6 is on an ore um, hex, so blue is surrounding it, so blue would get one ore. So blue would take that ore and put it into his deck. This six here is surrounded by white, so even though it's not white's go, white will collect one wheat from that one there. White will collect one wheat and put it in white's stack there. That's a collecting resources phase. Now you have the opportunity to trade. Trading is only with the active player. So blue might say, blue might say he's got all these things here, he's got He's got one of everything, but might be... No, he hasn't got any brick. Okay, so in this particular case, he might say, um, Hi guys, would anyone like to trade for brick? I want brick, and I'm willing to offer one wood. Or I'm willing to offer one wood and one ore for a brick. Or one ore for a brick. Or you can make any trade you want that's legal with the things you have. You can't fib or anything like that, but you don't have to show people the cards when you trade. You can say, I've got some woods, anyone want brick? And you can barter however you want there. Once you've finished trading, you can't trade anymore, so you've got to decide when you're done with trading, and then you may build. Building is the thing that increases what you have on the board generally. You've got a little cheat sheet here, okay, with building costs. And the four things you can build are you may build uh, a road, a settlement, a city, 
or a development card and they do different things. If you build a road you would pay one wood and one uh, brick and you would build a road adjacent to anything you currently have. So you can build it going off one of your settlements already or you can extend a road um, that you currently have. So this is a way for Blue to expand this place. Before he wants to build here he has to kind of build a road to that point. He can't build a new settlement yet until he's built a road to go to it. The second thing in your building uh, costs chart is a settlement and that requires one wood, one brick, one sheep and one wheat. And a settlement, say it's blues go again, he can do more than one thing a turn. He's built this road here, if he paid a wood, a brick, a sheep and a wheat, he may build a settlement there. Now he doesn't actually have any brick, that's why he was wanting to trade for it earlier. Um, but he might, let's say he had, and he would build a settlement there. So now he has three settlements on the board, and if a six is rolled now, he would not get one or he would get two or because he has two um, settlements surrounding it. The third thing you can build, if you want to, is a city. And a city is the most expensive thing on there. A city requires uh, three ore and a wheat. Uh, two wheat, sorry. And a city basically means you take your city um, marker and you would replace a settlement with a city. So I might decide to replace that settlement with that city. And now this one is now uh, going to get you double resources. So when I roll, for example, a three, I wouldn't get one wood because I have a city here. I would get two. The last thing you can build on your turn is a development card. And a development card costs one or one sheep and one wheat. And development cards are this stack of cards here. Some of them give you soldiers, some of them give you victory points, and some of them give you special bonuses. For example, this one says road building. It allows you to build two roads at any point in your turn. This one allows you to, it's a monopoly card, and it allows you to name a resource and collect all that resource from all the other players. So some of these can be quite... Um, mean, especially the soldiers if you play them in the right case, but they're things little like bonus cards you can get during the game. Some of them will help you get more points to end the game and some of them will just help you um, progress uh, with your settlements in your building. Once you've built, it's the end of your turn. Once you've finished all the building, remember you can build as much as you want and the turn will pass over to the next player. So it will be Red's turn here, he would take two dice and roll them and Red gets a five. So now you would look at this five here no one would get anything. This five here, oh look, Blue's just built that, but now Blue will get a wheat for it, as will Orange. You would take those resources and then Red would have his or her go, and Red might then uh, collect any resources, he wouldn't get anything in this particular case. Uh, Red might then trade, Red might then build, and you can build um, any way you want. The other things that could happen on your turn is, I mentioned a 7 earlier, now 7 can be the bane of people's lives in this game, and 7 has to do with this guy here, this is the robber, and he starts life on the desert tile over here. If you roll a 7, the first thing that happens is that anyone with more than 7 cards loses half of them rounded down. So you can't just sit there and hoard cards. You've got to be careful. If you ever get uh, more than seven cards, you lose half of them. And the second thing the person who rolls a seven does is they have to move the robber. So initially, the robber starts in the desert, but after that point, the robber can no longer go to the desert. The robber is moved somewhere else on the board. So say on White's turn, White rolled a seven. White might decide, oh, I can move the robber, um, and I'm going to move the robber somewhere where White isn't. So the, the what robber might be placed on this five here which is shared by two people and what would happen now the first thing he would do white would take one random resource of either blue or orange and the second thing that happens is that now if a five is rolled the robber is blocking that tile so this isn't a very good thing for orange and blue what orange and blue would like to do is roll a seven themselves to move the robber away the second way to remove the robber is to play one of the soldier cards that you get from your development card. A uh, soldier card looks like that. And a soldier card allows you effectively, at some point during your turn after you roll, is to duplicate the effects of the seven. You basically, uh, you play the soldier card in front of you, say it was Orange's go, he, would, uh, he or she would play the soldier card in front of them, I put to keep it in front of them because it will matter for something else and do the same effect as if they'd rolled a seven. So say they roll a three, they take the resource of three, they play the soldier card, you can play one a turn, and they can move the robber somewhere else. They might pick on white again for white picking on them, steal a resource from white, and they will block this hex from white and blue. To score points in this game, um, you're basically going to score one point 
for every settlement you have on the board, so in this case everyone has got two points to start with, Blue, after having built what Blue has built, has got two points to the settlement, and you're also going to score two points for every city you have. So that's one point to settlement, two points to city. So as it stands now, Blue's got one, two, three, four points. Blue is leading four points. The first person to ten points is the winner. Other ways to get victory points are, well, there are some victory point cards in the development cards that just give you one victory point that you keep secret, and but any point you reach ten at the end of the game, you just show them your victory points, and you've shown them you've got ten, and you've won. Um, another way to get points is to get either the largest army, so the first person to get three soldiers in front of them will take the largest army card, and this is worth two temporary points. If you have this at any point, you're considering to have two points more than you actually have. For someone to take it off you, they've got to build a larger army than yours. So if they get three, that's not good enough. They need to have one more than what you've got. The other card in this deck is the longest road card. It's very similar to the largest army. As soon as someone builds a road that's five roads or longer, they get the longest road card. And for someone to take it off them, they would need to build a longer road. So there are two ways to get extra victory points. The final thing you can do on this board is you've noticed around the edge there are ports and I haven't mentioned them yet. Whenever you're trading, you're trading with other players, but you may trade with a bank at four for one. So say no one's got any brick and you really want brick, you might trade four sheep for a brick or four wood for a brick with the bank and you put it back in the bank and you take the resources you want. However, these ports give you a better value for your trade. The ports that say three to one will just change the... Um, bank's ratio. Instead of 4 to 1, it's 3 to 1, so I don't need to trade 4 of 1 good, I can trade 3. And there are one of each port for each type of resource that give you 2 to 1. So this one here is 2 to 1 on all. So I may trade, if I'm on this port, if I have one of my settlements, say I'm white and I have one of my settlements there, I may trade 2 goods, 2 or for 1 good of my choice. So 2 or for 1 good of my choice. And if I'm also, over here, I could trade two brick for one good of my choice. So these, although they're on the edge and you don't get as many resources as from the hexes you're surrounding, they are a useful commodity to have. If sheep is plentiful, you might want to try and get the sheep port. If um, ore is plentiful, you might want to try and get the ore port. That is how to play Settlers of Catan. The first to ten points is the winner. As soon as someone hits ten, you stop. Um, and it is a very good introductory game for people who haven't really gamed before. I hope you enjoyed my review. Thank you very much.